This is the plaintiff, Thomas Holly. He says he went to a dog-friendly restaurant with his two huskies, and the defendant's dog freaked out and charged at his dog, Sheba, grabbing her by the neck. As he was breaking them up, the defendant's dog bit him on the finger. The defendant told him to send her the bills, which he did, and then she ignored him. So he's suing for $944.53, the amount he's owed. This is the defendant, Lilith Fernandez. She says she was sitting outside with her dog when the plaintiff walked in with his two misbehaved dogs and immediately came over to her table and her dog defended himself. The rude plaintiff had the nerve to curse her out. This whole thing was his fault, and she owes him nothing. She's accused of failing to control her dog. All parties, please raise your right hand. People's Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Marilyn Millian is presiding. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. All right, Mr. Holly, you are suing Ms. Fernandez and Jordan Gaudet, the owners of the dog, for $944.53 in vet bills that your dog incurred as a result of uh, their negligence, according to you. Talk to me and tell me what happened. I was taking my dogs to a dog-friendly restaurant on June 27th, and uh, we were going to find a table. And the defendant was the only other person uh, with a friend at the restaurant sitting on the patio. And uh, as we were going to find our seat, we, uh, I noticed the defendant. How many was, dogs did you have? I had two dogs, Dakota and Sheba. They're both Huskies. Okay. And yeah. how, uh, you had one dog? Yes, ma'am, a boxer. A boxer. Okay, so go on. And uh, we were going to find our seat, and I saw the defendant struggling with her dog holding on a leash. She was barking at was our dog. Was she sitting? She was sitting, yes. Okay, and was she with someone? She was with someone, yes. Okay, go on. And uh, the dog got away from her. It was on a leash, but the leash got out of her hand. How, how did that happen? Like, how quickly did that happen? Uh, I would say about 30 seconds or so. Okay. Uh, and during 30 seconds is kind of a long time. During those 30 seconds, what's happening? Are the dogs barking at each other, or what are they my, doing? My dogs weren't barking. We were just going to sit at a table. Uh -huh. And uh, then her dog came over and uh, got loose and grabbed Sheba by the neck. And uh, Sheba was crying, and I was trying. I had my hand in the dog's mouth trying to get it off of Sheba. And uh, the dog bit me on the finger. And uh, then somebody in the restaurant heard the commotion and came outside. I couldn't get the dog's jaws off of my dog. And he said he did something with the dog's nose or something and the dog let go. And then she went after my other, he went after my other dog, Dakota. And I thought he had gotten her too because she had blood on her neck. But when I took them both to the vet afterwards, the vet told me that Dakota's skin wasn't broken and the blood on her neck was from my finger. Right. And so, uh, then when we got home, we called animal control, and uh, they came by, and uh, they weren't concerned with what happened to Sheba at all. I sent in a picture. I have a picture of Sheba's neck. She had staples in her neck. You feel like animal control wasn't concerned? They weren't concerned about what happened to Sheba, but they were concerned about my finger being bitten. Okay. And so uh, they looked at my finger, and I did show them Sheba's neck, and they told me that was a civil matter. So here we are. Right. Um, did you ever have a chance to talk with her? Yeah, briefly. And what was discussed between you guys? She said, I asked her why she brought that dog here because she told me the dog didn't like other dogs. And you know, it's, it, there's always a lot of dogs at this restaurant. And she told me that at the time she was there, she was the only one on the patio. So that's why she had come. And did she say anything about paying for the damages? Uh, she told me to, uh, she gave, I got her phone number from the manager of the restaurant. And I texted her, and she yeah, but asked me. Had she told you anything about paying the bills or no? No, no. All right, so did she give you her information at that moment she, before you left? She, she gave it to the manager of the restaurant. She okay. went inside the restaurant while we were diffusing the situation, and then the manager gave me her contact information, and I texted her later that night. Okay. And she told me to send her a copy of the bill, which I did. And then what happened after you sent her a copy of the bill? Uh, she texted me back that they were having problems and that she would be in touch with me in two to three months and then I never heard back okay. but then her ex-boyfriend told me that uh, she, her phone had gotten stolen or something and she lost my number what's going on oh first this isn't the ex-boyfriend this is my moral support 
This is okay. He's yeah. not so yeah. he's not a witness at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to clear that up. Okay. Um, you want me to? Yes. Okay. Tell me your side. What happened there? So I went to the restaurant, and I actually used to work there, so I knew everything that was. Uh, I knew when it would not be busy. And it's not that he doesn't like other dogs. He doesn't like erratic dogs that go up to him like that. He's very shy. Recently, before that had happened, he had gotten attacked by another dog, and he didn't like that. And he was very, very, like, iffy about everything. And I brought them there when there were no other dogs there because of that, and it was pouring raining. Right, so. I know, but it is a public place, yes, and other dogs could appear magically, yes, right? So go on. We were actually just about to leave, and then I saw him coming up with his dogs, and I recognized him from the restaurant before, and I knew of his dogs, and they were, whenever I had uh, waited on him at his table, they were always very hyper and jumping everywhere, and they would jump on me, and they would, like, lick from his plate, lick from his table, jump on his table, so all over the place. And I saw them coming up, and I saw him, and I said, oh, wait, 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 wait. And I got down by, my, by the dog, and I was holding on to him by his collar and make sure he would stay there. He had a leash, and it was tied up to the pipe near the table I was at, and it was secure. But he was very strong, and when they came towards us, they smelled him and me, and he's very protective. He didn't like that when they When you were... see, say they came toward us, are you referring to his dogs? Oh, yes, yes. His, his... dogs come by where you and your dog are? And do they, they put their nose where exactly? How many inches from you? I'm not sure how many inches, but very close because they had a very long leash. Um, the dog that I was with had a So short they come leash. and sniff? Yes. They, they sniff you? They sniff me and... And they sniff the dog? Yes. But nothing happens at that moment? No, no, no. My, like, the dog had sniffed them and it was fine, but I think it was because they had sniffed me as well and he was protective of that and because they were really big. He's a medium-sized boxer. Okay, but I'm sorry. He keeps walking and he goes to his own table and sits down with his dogs and that table's how far from you? It was maybe two tables distance, but they had long leashes. Okay, but they had long leashes and what? The dogs are how far away from each other once he sits? Um, 10 feet or so. Okay. Ten feet. So how does, when you say, oh, well, but the dog sniffed me, well, when the dog sniffed you, when his dog sniffed you, if in fact that happened, there's no dog bite occurring. This happens after he is past you, seated, and the dogs are secure by him, his dogs, and then your dog is supposedly secure by you. How does it happen then? How, did the, how does the dog get loose? He had a collar around his neck, and he actually, I didn't let it go. He pulled it so tight, he was choking himself, and he pulled his neck through the collar. Oh, so your dog really went after the, those dogs? Yes, it's oh, because... Yeah, your dog it, really wanted to get there. Okay. It's because they Is were, it your dog, or is it your ex's dog? My ex's dog. I keep saying my dog because at the time, we were together, yeah. so... Yeah. He was never legally mine. Right, but he was in your control at that time. Yes, ma'am. So he, he can sue you as a party. Actually, he sued you, and Jordan is your ex-boyfriend, right? Yes, ma'am. And he gave you authority to just litigate this for him. Yes, ma'am. Um, was he at the restaurant at the time? He was actually working there at the time, and the person that I was with, I had told her, hey, can you go get Jordan? And then she was like, okay, but she stood there in shock for a second, so I guess I, she didn't go fast enough, and she told me she went to go tell him, and he thought it was a joke at first. Is he the person who got the dog to release? No, ma'am. It was some other man. I actually don't know the other man's name that got the dog to release. How long was your, the dog you were in charge of clamping on his dog? Um, five minutes. It's I a long time. Know. It was a long time. I yeah, five minutes is interminable it, for a dog attack. Yes, it was. I'm sure it was about five minutes, but everything happened so fast that mm. I... I think it was just going on for that amount of time. It was just very hectic, a lot of things going on at once. Yeah. Oy. This is your finger? It's not too bad. Did you end up having medical attention for it? I just went to urgent care and took antibiotics for two weeks. Really? Yes. Yeah, well, I, oh, because the, it was a dog, so that's why. Did, she have, did they produce the rabies shots for the dog? The animal control called me and told me that they did. Okay. These are your dogs? Those are my dogs. That's they are beautiful dogs. Which one's Dakota. which? Sheba's the white one, and Dakota's the one with silver on her. Sheba's the one that got bit. This is Sheba. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. And then Dakota, we thought, got bit, but she didn't. No, it was my blood that was on her, yeah. the vet told me. So what, okay, so they put staples in. All right, and you incurred $944.53 in vet bills, and then what happens? You submit it, he submits it to you, and you don't pay, and what's your defense? Why do you think you don't have to pay a penny? 
my defense was at the time um, I was with the co-defendant and we were trying to work on doing it together but then we had broken up shortly after that and he and I had discussed it and he said oh no you don't have to help me I'll pay for it and everything and I was like okay fine but we never got anything you know in paper because we were boyfriend and girlfriend at the time we just talked about it face to face so I had moved away and I thought nothing was you know in my responsibility anymore we had already talked about it I thought he was taking care of it and um, that he didn't I'm sorry about that I had no idea he didn't take care of it until he had texted me and said this is um, Thomas Holly with Sheba I understand that you moved and then I realized that my ex-boyfriend had given him my new number and oh, where and I had that, lived. And that grand that's yeah. some. Yeah I had I had no idea so then I knew exactly who had said it and I was like oh wow so um, that's how I knew. Did you talk to your ex? I did. And, and what did he say? He said um, oh uh, neither of us paid. Don't put that on me. Neither of us paid. Don't put that on me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it wasn't. It wasn't a. Oh, sorry about that. They had to put that on you. He was. He was. Any actually, regrets? N uh, I don't think he has any regrets. No. He's no. Just, I meant you. Oh. <laughs> regrets? Yes. Oh, I don't put that on me. Boom. You know. He is kind of right because you were in charge of the dog, but it is his dog, so he doesn't get to wash his hands entirely. But. Um, but you, you know, in your answer to the to the complaint, you go on and on that this is really his fault because why? Why do you think it's his fault though? It wouldn't have happened if he hadn't what? Um, stayed at the table he was staying at, seeing that I was struggling to keep the dog in control. So what do you think he should have done differently? Maybe move to a farther table or like maybe just stayed at the same table or pulled the leashes back until I was able to get a hold of my ex-boyfriend and tell him to come get the dog and I was trying to like handle everything but I'm I weigh more than the dog but the dog is very strong I was trying to keep a grip on him and make sure nothing happened because they were two really big dogs and I I knew something would possibly happen but I did you you said that I I told him to wait and he she, you did a sign like that. Did that happen? Did she tell you to wait or? I don't recall that, but uh, the 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 restaurant did capture this whole thing on video. Do you have it? And I don't have the video. I went back to the restaurant, and they said that they had a problem with their video system, and somebody came out and deleted the DVR, and so the video got well, deleted. Normally, what I hear from people on why I don't have it is because it records over itself. I don't think that's true anymore now when we have uh, you know when it's on the internet but um, and I, I also learned that day that the the, the owner of the dog did that was happens actually to a, have worked that, there at the place there. that has that. the video that, that is the non-existent okay. I don't right. remember ever being served by her before okay I I don't think that somebody else has to see you struggling to do what you have a legal obligation to do and avoid you because he should know that you're gonna violate your legal obligation and lose control I think it might be smarter, but I, he doesn't have an obligation to do anything um, because he expects you to do what you've got to do. He's doing what he has to do. His, he, the dogs are in his control, and you're not doing it. And I don't think that, that the fact that... Did your dogs have a 10-foot leash? No, it's not a long leash. It's right, and, uh, and your dog, clearly, the dog you were in control of, if it's too big a dog for you to handle, don't handle it. Don't be there, and don't be in public. And if the dog doesn't like other dogs, you should not, you, who weigh 100 pounds soaking wet, should not be in charge of that boxer. And um, the boxer got out of the piece in order to go over there and do whatever it wanted to do, which was not say hello. Um, so I am finding you and your ex... Uh, jointly, because you're both being sued, jointly responsible for $944.53 in vet bills. We're lucky that it wasn't worse. Good luck to both of you. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. So the plaintiff prevails. He's going to get exactly what he wanted, the $944. Uh, Ms. Fernandez, you heard the judge, what she had to say. How do you feel about her verdict today? I feel like we are still not solely responsible, and some responsibility could have been held in the plaintiff's hands as well, but everything is settled. All right. Well, listen, that's the judge's verdict. You both have to live with it, and uh, that'll do it. So thank you very much. The exit's on your left, all right? Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Now, here comes the, uh, the plaintiff, Mr. Holly. Uh, you know, I would ask him the very same question. Mr. Holly, you heard the judge's verdict. I guess my question to you is, don't you think it's always risky to take a dog or a pair of dogs to an outdoor restaurant like that? I didn't think so at first, but I think now it is. My wife said I shouldn't have brought the dogs to the restaurant, and then, of course, Sheba wouldn't have gotten attacked. But I had brought them there. I bring them there probably two or three times a week before this happened, and there's always a lot of dogs there. 
and I've never had a problem. So, uh, you know, this kind of shocked me. I didn't think this would have happened, but it did. All right. Hope your finger heals well, and uh, thank you very much. Okay? Thank you, sir. Goodbye. Do it. You're very welcome. All right, Harvey. Well, look, Doug, this is a dog-friendly restaurant, but it is a public place. And as such, in a public place in most cities, dogs have to be on a leash. And if the dogs aren't on a leash, then it is automatic negligence. My son ended a business with a friend. They have a credit card balance in his friend's name. My son wants to pay his half of the balance as of this statement. But the friend says, you're going to have to pay additional fees and interest on the balance because he can't pay his portion Because friend can't pay his portion right. off? Right. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of a deadbeat, and I'm really behind. On so you're going to have to bills. share in my deadbeatiness. So, right. No. So you got to pay the 22% income or, no. or APR if, if, on if my... If her uh, son has the money to pay card. the half, that's his obligation, right. then he pays the half. Have proof right. that you paid the half. Right. Don't just give cash to your friend. Right. Take, go ahead and, and, you know, send half of the money and have a paper trail right. on it. Right. And then uh, anything else that happens should be on the other guy. Because right. if he's the one who needs financing, he's the one who should pay for his own financing. Right. The real question here, what really matters is... Who gets those frequent flyer miles? I mean, <laughs> come on, everyone, get those cheap flights, right?